inshallah, the more and more we, we understand from these master's teachings then we understand the importance of what's being taught. All of these haqqaiqs and realities of annihilating oneself and then teaching the Muhammadan haqqaiqs so that the servant can reach towards Allah's Divinely Presence. Without that they are reaching a nafsani understanding of Allah's Presence through themselves. And the self trying to understand Allah is of no value. But to lose oneself and enter the Muhammadan haqqaiq and the Muhammadan reality that is the goal is within that reality is Allah's Divine the Presence. I'm not on earth and not in heaven but I'm in the heart of my believer. And the qalb al-mu'min baytullah. And for Allah is in reference to Prophet that the heart of Prophet is the house of Allah for, for within the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad resides the Divinely Qudra, the Divinely Speech, the Holy Qur'an, all of these emanations from that immense reality. So alhamdulillah inshaAllah keep that fountain open Ameen. for us to reach where Allah allows His servants to reach Ameen. and that to teach the love of Sayyidina Muhammad inshaAllah. Do we have any questions for tonight? As Salaamu Alaikum dear Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa uh, and thank you for everything. Mm. Could you please explain how to differentiate which night dreams have Divinely Source and which ones are from shaitan? For example, seeing night dreams about possible bad events in the future is a precaution from Allah or a game of jinns. Sorry for my ignorance and thank you in advance for your answer. <coughs> so that <coughs> the people are Bismillahir Rahman Rahim, Madakum Sayyidi Rasul Kareem, Ati Allah, Ati Rasul Ulul Amri Minkum, and that people are fascinated by dreams. And if we train ourselves to negate the dream and discipline ourselves to meditate and tafakkur and contemplation. To establish the living connection, the real live connection is far greater than pre-recorded messages where it could have come from many different sources because so many people can tamper with the dream. It's coming into your head and not to your heart, so your head is open. It can be a result of the TV, it can be a result of the jinn in the room, it can be a result of conversations, food, diet strongly affect what people are seeing. And generally the tariqah doesn't see a benefit and traditionally all of the shaykhs of Naqshbandiya didn't see a benefit but found more a far greater benefit in the tafakkur and contemplation and making your connection. If you make your connection then information will come to you real time, danger will come to you and understanding real time. Tafakkur will come and explain events that are happening on this earth and the whole connection becomes powerful real time. And as you're moving understandings and e events are coming in real time. So it's far greater, that's why they negate it, they don't need to hear about it and don't want to encourage it. So that's why if you find somebody that wants to hear your dreams and, and then too much you become interested in that, then also all the other beings around you say, oh this one likes dreams and then they start to all begin to influence that realm and you find yourself handicapped from ever trying to connect. 
because you're just entertained by the, the, the illusion of, of uh, dreams. So it's best to negate them and say that I need to connect my heart for real time. And for messengers of Allah then this is a part of their wahi and their revelation. But for regular humans too many people are interfering with the signal of the head and too many ways to influence the head. So it's best to, to leave that out inshaAllah. Mm -hmm. As Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuhu Dear Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullahi We work with people who do not share our beliefs and religion and we see ourselves working in the same space where they burn incense sticks in front of their idols. We usually turn up getting headaches and atmosphere is so dense and gloomy, what can we do to protect ourselves? Yeah, the difficulty if you, what, what country you live in because doesn't sound like any Western country, nobody's allowed to burn incense <laughs> in an outpost and have an altar for some, some sort of creature and burn incense for them. So even here in the Western world you're not allowed to wear perfume and atar so that, that's something different. But if you're working for an organization and they want to, to do that and it's difficult. That's why then if you can find and relocate yourself to a different organization, a different company that doesn't have those issues. So if that's something uh, that's available to the person then alhamdulillah otherwise they keep their wudu, keep your head covered, keep your taweez on and uh, make istighfar and that Allah knows your condition, mufawid amri in Allah, inna Allahum basirun bi libad Ya Rabbi that you verily you see my condition that inshaAllah open for me an opening to, to work in a better environment. So take all the precautions as a testing and uh, to how to defend yourself from bad and negative energies and uh, the rest inshaAllah Allah provide an opening. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah How can we sit with the shaykh and learn these principles? Ocean of guidance, I cry on my loneliness. You're, you're sitting with the shaykh now. So that the whole concept is it, 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 there cannot be a location where you can bring 10,000 people and everybody sit with the shaykh. So because of this technology they open up from this Allah's ni'mat and Allah's blessings and, and mercy that everybody can sit down. As soon as the shaykh goes live everybody in their living room can watch it or if it's at a bad time for them they can watch the break, uh, the, 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 the recasting of it and uh, you're sitting with the shaykh. So there's no time for them. And these haqqaiqs they don't have an expiration date. So at any moment you sit with them and meditate, connect your heart, learn how to do all of the spiritual practices to take yourself to a timeless reality. I mean that's why the book was called Timeless Reality, right? Because we have a reality on this earth that is very much time oriented and people live and die and every, everything is governed by the clock on this earth. When we elevate into the world of light, everyone who studies in school sciences, light has no time. So as a result when we operate from the light, think from the light, connect into the world of light, there is no time. So in the place where there is no time the connection is always live. That's why when you meditate with the shaykhs you're, you're meditating in a live connection. When you learn how to meditate as soon as you watch a video you first make your muraqabah, make your connection and watch the video. See yourself in the presence of the shaykh watching that video and taking your notes and learning and, and showing the, the earnestness and the desire to learn and alhamdulillah and everything should be very real for you. And a matter of fact many people the farther away they are the more powerful the experience is because they take it with a, a, a tremendous zeal because they want it, they want to achieve it, they want to be dressed by it.
somebody may be close by five minutes away and say, I don't feel like going today and they don't go. So the space and time is of no relevance, wherever you are they can reach you and you want to train to reach into the world of light which is a timeless reality inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah Is the ego based on all the fear, emotion, sadness in our subconscious that we experience since childhood is what stopping us to raise our consciousness? The ego is a demon that created from hell. So it's a being from an origin that's very bad and he's familiar with Satan and that creature is small. So if you watch a movie Golden Compass just to get an understanding where they show the, the ego on the outside. When you start out small the creature is not you know a little bit somewhat here and there. But why they call the naughty twos? Because by the child becomes two years old that creature has a appetite and it's not going to be told what to do and begin to yell and scream, yell and scream. That's a, that's a creature coming out now and as a result of the conditionings and how the parents raise that child that creature is going, either going to become stronger or it's going to be weakened. So whatever Prophet brought was to weaken it. So when you have a child that's screaming at a young age, use water. Go in, gently put water on them is wudu because that water is burning the creature that making that child to scream and yell and to go out of control. So then whatever Prophet brought was for these energies, what they eat, what they drink, what you eat, what you drink. If you're feeding the child through your body then what you eat and drink with du'a, with halal, with all of these things were all energy. So if you're going to put sort of wild energy onto yourself no doubt the child going to be like a lion and just or, or, or like hyena just all over the place. So everything is based on conditioning, training and all of the disciplines and for ourselves then definitely whatever we're going to put into it is either going to strengthen it. So that's why Prophet described that what we eat and what we do then is going to be affecting the nafs and the shaitan that runs through the blood. And that's why the zikrs are tremendous lights and power, the salawats are tremendous lights and powers that begin to burn that nafs. That's why people like falling asleep because the energy is coming and hitting them and burning that nafs. Some people actually fear fire of something burning in them because that energy is coming to burn the nafs. And after the zikr and after the programs usually many people begin to fight after on the way leaving because the nafs was being hit so hard it looks for a way to explode. That's why after these events and spiritual occasions give yourself something sweet, some candy, some treats so that the nafs doesn't attack and that, okay, 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 you calm down, calm down and then you can sort of pacify. So observing oneself you begin to understand the creature and how it's acting and what provokes it, what calms it, what uh, sort of neutralizes that creature, inshaAllah. SubhanAllah Sayyidi, someone just asked that question, what is the significance of falling asleep during the stream? Alhamdulillah. Yeah, alhamdulillah. Um, as Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuhu Dearest Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuhu Please forgive my ignorance, could Sayyidi please explain the correct adab to visit maqam of awliya? Is there a specific adab when visiting Naqshbandi awliya and the golden chain masters? Yeah that you're visiting the light of Sayyidina Muhammad that I think we have the, you can email help me 
at Nur Muhammad and we have the actual recitation like a whole wazifa when entering into a maqam and we were doing that throughout Turkey. And the, the main thing is that you're entering into the presence of the light of Sayyidina Muhammad so you're keeping in wudu, keeping your salawats, did the awrad before you left, made your connection and as you enter into them then you begin to do all the recitations, the madads, the salawats on Sayyidina Muhammad and during that whole time making your salawats and, and durood sharif to be dressed by these lights and beatific lights. What making that maqam special is the proximity of that shaykh to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad So in the wazifa for Mawlana it's praising upon Prophet, the companions, Ahlul Bayt and giving all of them salams, giving the shaykhs the salams because all those lights are present at that location. And that those lights then to dress the servant, bless the servant after you gave all your salams then to sit in respect and connect one's heart with that light and that ask for the faiz of the shaykh, the blessings of the shaykh, the najat of the shaykh that from the light that Prophet has given to you that please dress me and take away my difficulties and dress me in the proximity and the light and the love of Prophet Don't go asking for money only. Oh I want this money, I want that money, this is not nice. Go and ask for the love of Sayyidina Muhammad to be granted faith, to be granted maqam al-ihsan, to be granted the immense loves, love of Sayyidina Muhammad inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah Can you please explain which kind of link is between Prophet's light, soul and our inside soul passenger. What kind of what? Um, what kind of link is between Prophet's light, soul, and our inside soul passenger? You imagine that he, the Prophet's light is the ocean, and when Allah created you, He took one drop of it, and from that drop gave only a small portion into your body, and the rest of that drop is in the Divinely Presence. So you only have a small drop from a drop within the ocean of Muhammadun Rasulullah and that's everyone, there's Rabbul Kafireen wa Rabbul Mu'mineen. That's why awliyaullah know that all souls are from this ocean of Muhammadun Rasulullah So those that accepted Islam alhamdulillah and the rest then this is the nation of da'wah in which we are to send the teachings and the good word of that reality and that origin, inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu ya Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah Can you please advise what is the purpose of neutrons in a nucleus? Who do they represent in spirituality? The neutrons or the nucleus? Neutrons and a nucleus? <laughs> yeah, yeah the, the, the reality of the atom because atom and atom is one. So the same reality that Allah want us to understand from that reality. And the atomic reality shows these divine realities and, and these haqqaiqs. So the nucleus is a Divinely Presence and that uh, everyone only has one nucleus in that atom and many electrons. So then our whole life is about we are the electrons and all the negative characteristics and that our journey is into the Lord of Power, into the center. So then our life is about reaching towards that center and that power. And for the electron to jump it needs a bolt of energy from the center. And that's why then the meditation and contemplation to the Divine, the Presence that to connect me with these oceans of power. So when this ocean of power begin to send signals into the heart, at one point for that soul to elevate it sends a bolt of energy onto that heart and pulls its reality closer. 
And that's why that's what you focus on, that's what your nazar is on, your nazar is on the path that and your, your bazgasht and all of these other principles that are difficult to talk about at higher levels because all of, of their focus is the Divinely Presence because they're in the ocean of Muhammadun Rasulullah and when that energy hits it brings them deeper in, deeper in, deeper in into the oceans of lightning and power which is in the nucleus, inshaAllah. Mm. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam mm. Alhamdulillah. In Naqshbandi teachings is there a practice to make the physical heart start doing zikr Allahu, Allahu, Allahu with each heartbeat or is this in some Qadri teachings? To make the heart start? Yeah, heart start doing zikr. With each heartbeat. Yeah, I don't, I can't answer that because I don't understand really the question. So, there's a different zikrs, we have the awrads to do that you have to do the zikrs to connect your heart. The heart is already beating, so this is all about making the connection. As soon as you do the wazifa and you do the awrad, do the daily recitations, you're connecting your heart, connecting your heart, then you draw deeper into that reality until the shaykhs begin to send a, an energy onto the heart and the heart becomes lit. But the connection has to be established first. So that what would be the purpose of, of igniting the heart when the person doesn't have a connection, doesn't have the foundation of, of how to reach their reality. And that's the danger that, that many other groups they, they have something that ignite something or do something but they yet haven't established the solid foundation and different experiences but the no, no, no sort of uh, discipline and connection and connection with it and then can lead to many other problems and dangers and visions and things that they can't control. That's why everything in Naqshbandiya is about the discipline of the connection, make the connection, establish the, the reality that you understand and all of that also establishes that you're nothing. So if you're nothing then you're going deeper into the shaykh, deeper into the shaykh to be in the fana of the shaykh to be non-existent. At that time then you understand you're non-existent. And if you're non-existent then you're less likely to have all of the egoistic realities. But if they don't teach you that and you begin to see things, feel things, have energies of things then you're actually creating a pharaoh. Can you imagine a room filled with students that like are pharaoh that they have no disciplines but in two seconds here recite this and they start to feel things and that, that would be extremely bad for them and difficult. But Naqshbandiya is probably one of the more firmer schools of esoteric teaching and they're very disciplined in, in their discipline and how to, to reach and to meditate, to contemplate and how to make their connection. They said that before that that was their secret while others had like the swords and stab and whirling. Naqshbandiya was tafakkur and how to sit and to contemplate and that's why these masters then wrote these immense principles that are all based on reaching the Muhammadan haqqaiq and entering into the heart, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Sayyidi, how to do Rabita, sh Rabita Sharif during the khatam? Do we do the zikr in our hearts or with our lips? Rabita Sharif is the connection. So you, before the zikr starts make the connection with the shaykhs. They're asking for their madad, asking for their presence and you should practice that all the time so that as soon as the, the, you're going to sit for the zikr you make your connection and visualize and make your and establish your connection. And, and through that teaching they've already taught that when you're doing that you've negated yourself. When you pray negate yourself, when you do your zikr negate yourself. Everything you do, do in that connection. So that it's not you making the zikr but it's them dressing you with their fires and their fires is doing the zikr over your heart. 
then as that becomes stronger and stronger then it will generally lead you to stop reciting out loud because the energy is just too strong to, to recite out loud and they become more khafi, khafi. But we do it out loud so that to gather and to attract people towards that reality on how to connect and how to, to be dressed by that reality inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabba izzata amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha.